we got a second reading on this ordinance. I don't know if anybody's going to talk about it. We'll just do a second reading. Okay. We don't have to take any action either. Then. Uh, welcome. I'd like to call this April 26, 2021 council meeting to order. If you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please call the roll. Shields. Here. Point. Here. I'm sorry, Simpson. Here. Hazeltine. Present. Heppinger. Here. Lamb. Here. Rose. Here. Reading of the minutes. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that the minutes of the regular meeting of April 12, 2021 is prepared and submitted by the clerk be approved. Second. Discussion on the approval of the minutes. Will the clerk please call the roll on the approval of the minutes? <coughs> Simpson. Me. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hazel Tang. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Reports of standing committees. The finance committee met prior to council this evening and will again meet on, I think, May 10th. Uh, the health, safety, and sanitation. Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, health, safety, and sanitation will be holding a meeting <coughs> May 10th prior to our finance meeting. So it'll either be at 5 or 5 30. Just uh, to go over some of the proposals that the police department is, is going to be presenting for our budget process later on this year. So any member of council that would has any questions or would like to listen to the presentation can show up for our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Public properties. Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mr. President. No report and no meeting scheduled. Thank you. Special legislation. Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Two things, one thing I'm working on still, and I think we'll probably have a meeting sometime early in June is to come back um, to take another look at the um, proposal on demolition. And the second thing that we, we, had at at, we had at our last meeting was a discussion about feeding wild animals, including cats and dogs. And we went away from that after the vote of council with an idea that we could, we could tweak that, that ordinance. And in looking at it and then talking to the people that spoke at the meeting, at that meeting, and people that had spoken previously at special legislation, um, I have met with um, animal advocates, veterinarians, um, folks involved in rescue operations, um, attorneys in, involved in enforcing uh, animal, um, uh, protecting animals, to kind of go over the whole proposal one more time. And I think for the benefit of all of us in city council administration that have a, a goal that we we're trying to reach, from my perspective, um, I probably needed to dig deeper into the particulars of what exactly we were doing and if we could do some things differently that would, would certainly um, be beneficial to the uh, animals that we're trying to deal with, as well as the issue raised by those animals. And so I don't have it, you know, I don't have anything at the moment, but um, my, my intention is if we can get it back in special legislation, we can have a, fuller, a full discussion of what I'm trying to, what I'm working to put together, and then we can bring it back and have the discussion as a group again. And I believe it will be, you know, I, I, I feel very positive and a lot of it I'm really excited about some of the possibilities of what we can do. So that, that, that um, I don't have a meeting scheduled, but I would like to put it back, that back there so that we can continue on with it. Okay. Um, the streets and sidewalks, Mr. Heffinger. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report at this time and no meeting scheduled. Water utilities. Uh, Mrs. Hazeltine. Thank you, Mr. President. No meeting scheduled at this time and nothing new to report. Emerging Technologies, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing to report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Okay, request for council action. We have several for finance. We have 2181 debt refinancing and new debt issue issuance. 2182 application of federal grant funds, state road reconstruction. 2183 donation of 25 Dell computers mm -hmm. in Banana City Schools. 2184, DARE vehicle donation. 2185, amend salaries and benefits code, convert part-time enforcement inspector to full-time. 2186, Armstrong Internet Access Line Muni Court. 2187, ODOT traffic signal maintenance agreements. 
2188 expenditure of 15,000 Winthrow Construction and Engineering, 2189 increased PO 2021 1040 absolute construction chip grant, 2190 approved MCRC sponsorship banner, 2191 accept one easement for North Broadway bridge replacement and for the Health, Safety and Sanitation Committee, 2192 amend salaries and benefits code 3105 and three additional officers for the police department. Reports of municipal officers, Mayor Hamill. Thank you, Mr. President. So for uh, COVID-19, Medina County remains in the red level. Uh, Nino and I were on a conference call this morning, uh, which we're on every Monday morning uh, with the health commissioner. And she said that um, this past week's numbers have been the lowest that they've been uh, in over a year. And if we continue at that pace this week, we will not move out of red, but she expects that we will move out of orange or from red to orange or maybe even yellow. Uh, it's it's that that impressive the the number of cases reducing the uh, hospitalizations are reducing and the number of patients in ICU so that's all positive for our, our community in the meantime they're asking that we remain vigilant avoid large gatherings wear masks in public wash hands frequently and social distance uh, there's updated information on the business openings and safety protocols both on the city and the health department websites and I just want to thank the uh, the public for all of their efforts in, in helping us uh, drive down the number of cases. We opened up the uh, city hall doors on uh, 8 a.m. April 2nd. Uh, we are requiring masks in, inside uh, for, for those that come in, as well as employees dealing with the public and social distancing uh, will be enforced as well. Uh, there's continues to be some, in my opinion, misinformation by uh, a group titled Save Your Courthouse. In November, they told the voters that the county courts would be torn down and the county would not proceed uh, without the city if they voted for the issue on the ballot, and both of those were not true. The county is in the process of st starting the foundation work, fencing in the back, and are going full bore with their project. Now, now they're telling voters we are trying to overrule the vote in November when in actuality the vote in November required the city to go to voter, voters like we are. In fact, the ballot language was to, quote, prohibit the city of Medina from authorizing, appropriating, or spending funds for or using city resources to facilitate demolition or construction at the Medina <coughs> County Courthouse without a vote, which is exactly what we're doing. We're going to the uh, voters. Also telling voters that this new parking deck that we build outside of City Hall will be turned over to developers, uh, which is not true. The city owns it, will continue to own the deck. The deck is public parking available for everybody in the city. No spaces are being reserved at all for any development around the parking deck. And the city council is obligated pursuant to ORC 1901.36 to provide, quote, suitable accommodations unquote, for the municipal court. And the fact that the city administration, both myself and Mayor Lever, as well as the city council, have acknowledged for the past 20 years that the current space is not adequate, uh, it's obvious that the city is on notice uh, to resolve that issue pursuant to that ORC section. Then there was a letter to the editor on Friday, April 23rd, claiming that the municipal court could be expanded at its current site more economically. And we all know that's not true because we had quotes to add on and remodel the existing municipal court six or so years ago. And those numbers were in the area of $9 million to $11 million. The other thing that, that happens if we do it next door is we have to move the court operations off-site, um, fix up an area they move to, and then after the development takes place across the street at their present location, move them back. So we're moving them twice, as well as spending money that could have been used on the project to fix a place up for them to ha have court operations during the construction. The city's cost for the new construction on the square was $8 million. Uh, we believe it even cheaper to renovate the 1969 than build new, because it's cheaper to renovate than to build new. 
Uh, we can't say for sure what those numbers are because the vote in November prohibited us from expending any dollars to get the accurate figures until we do this vote in, in May. There was also a claim that the court charged excessive fees for, quote, parking tickets and other fees. That's not true either. The parking tickets are a civil process that does not even go to the municipal court. The $4 million in fees, um, it stated, should be used for better purposes, when in fact the city is required to use these funds only for court purposes to upgrade the facilities, either there or somewhere for municipal court operations. Building on that site across the street loses all the efficiencies that have been shared repeatedly with the public. Do not be misled, collaboration with the county on the courts makes the most sense both operationally and fiscally to provide the required suitable accommodations. And then last but not least, I'd just like to share with the public, uh, we have a number of business testimonials on the city website, www.medinoh.org. Uh, if you go to the website, then the economic development page, then there's a tab that says business te testimonials. And we currently are showing one from Rivago, one from The Foundry, one from Kokosing, one from Sandrich, and one from Echelon. And what, what my opinion is, is that if we have business owners and C CEOs talking about their positive experience with the city and helping others to see how great Medina is, it's a much stronger message than the city itself talking about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Durham, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. I um, want to remind all residents that the city does have an income tax. Um, it is collected for us by RITA. That's the Regional Income Tax Agency. You can get to their website at ritaohio.com. Um, and the filing deadline for 2020 taxes was pushed back to May 17th because to match the state and the federal deadline. Um, second thing is the American Rescue Plan Act funds. There's an ordinance here on the agenda tonight to create a fund for those. We've been uh, advised by the federal government that our estimate for the uh, city of Medina for that funds will be about $5 million. Thank you. Mr. Gladys, building official. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a quick update for the community, for council and the community on the community development building department's construction activities for the first quarter of 2021 with a week still to go. Building permit numbers are up by 10% compared to last year's first quarter. Some of the larger projects broken down in, into four categories are industrial, there's five projects, Carlisle brake and friction, Sealy mattress, spray products, Buckeye Fresh, do it best. These five businesses together are looking to employ close, employ close to 200 people. Commercial, four projects, CSL Plasma on North Court Street. That's a $1.1 million new tenant interior alteration project that will occupy two existing vacant storefronts. Discount Tire on North Court Street, which is the old Pizza Hut site. This project got off to a slow start it looks like a building with the amount of block work that was completed last week. It's scheduled to be open, completed in July. The rear drive aisle behind this site will be rebuilt and resurfaced. And then uh, there's Taco Bell on North Court Street, new building on existing site. Chick-fil-A on Court Street, new building on existing site of Eaton Park. The last two projects are planning on starting construction in May. Medical, there's two projects, um, Medina Hospital, two major interior alteration projects with two more on the drawing table. And then last but not least, residential. There's a total of 18 new residential housing units. These housing units are throughout the city. That ends my report. Thank you, Mr. Patton, city engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this afternoon at Board of Control, the board awarded uh, three contracts. The first one for Ray Mallard Trail, resurfacing uh, phase two. The second for our annual concrete pavement joint ceiling program. And the third uh, on our second try was the City Hall parking deck detention basin. We anticipate all those projects to start in the coming weeks. Out to bid now is our 2021 concrete street repair program. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Walter, Fire Department. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is just a uh, notice primarily for the uh, Medina Township and Montville Township residents the department's trying to get the uh, 
driveway bridge safety or approval program uh, going again. It was, it was started by our operations captain, Steve Ingersoll, back uh, kind of uh, got put on the back burner with the COVID. Uh, what this is is for uh, property owners that have long driveways that uh, would require a fire truck to cross over a bridge or a large culvert in order to get to the residents. Um, as you can imagine, that some bridges are not okay for those trucks to cross. Uh, so Captain Ingersoll has, uh, working with someone from the state, I believe, or from ODOT, uh, come up with a, an approval program that the property owners or business owners uh, can use to get their bridges uh, and culvert certified for the trucks to pass. And then if they do pass, they can get a sign at, at their discretion placed at the end of the driveway to, that would identify that driveway as one that's been approved. So I just want to let the residents in both townships know about that. It is a free service. You can get additional information on the fire department's uh, Facebook page um, or contact uh, Captain Ingersoll at our main station, station one. And uh, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendel, Planning and Community Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hubert, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Worley, Parks and Recreation Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple updates. Uh, this coming Thursday, April 29th, uh, is Arbor Day in the city of Medina. Um, and I want to thank the Noon Kiwanis. Uh, this was the 40th year that they potted seedlings for the third graders in the school district. Um, in addition to Medina City Schools, they also include uh, Medina Christian Academy in St. Francis. So uh, last Thursday at our Shade Tree Commission meeting, we potted a little over 700 trees uh, for the third graders and the uh, participants of our Earth Day cleanup at the rec center. So I did wanna thank them for their continued uh, commitment and contribution uh, to the youth in the community. Uh, this year, they're doing a virtual presentation um, and our cable TV uh, help facilitate that so that all the third graders can see the award ceremony. Uh, additionally, on April 29th is our senior spring fling at the rec center uh, from 11 to 1. Registration is required. There'll be outdoor activities. Um, hopefully the weather cooperates. And lastly, um, beginning on May 1st, uh, we will begin selling a limited amount of season passes for the Memorial Pool. Um, capacity this year is going to be limited to 150 people. Uh, and we're scheduled to open on May 29th. Uh, the hours of operation for this year will be 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. as we are looking to do some programming and after hour swim lessons. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Kinney. Thank Police you, Department. Mr. President. The Police Department is hiring for the position of patrol officer. Interested candidates can find information for that and apply at www.medinaoh.org in the employment tab. The application deadline is May 26th and the written test will be held on June 2nd. Also, we'll likely be announcing a test for a dispatch position as well, so stay tuned for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piccoli, Service Department. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, much desired yard, yard waste program began this morning and it'll run through uh, November 30th. Um, place the items at the curb on the regular day of trash pickup. Uh, the program is going very well. Uh, a lot of folks are increasingly using the service. Um, hydrant flushing will also start in May. Uh, we'll advise folks when uh, in the areas that will be flushed. Um, just to remember if the uh, resident experiences uh, discolored water to run the uh, cold water to flush it, you can always call the service office at 330-722-9081. Thank you. Thank you. Notice the communication and petitions. There are none. Unfinished business. We have one item. We have a second reading of Ordinance 55-21. Ordinance 55-21 is an ordinance authorizing the law director to prepare the necessary documentation for the transfer of city lot number 9374, permanent parcel number 028, 1981-391, containing 0 0.1874 acres of land to the city, to the Medina City Development Corporation, CIC. And uh, this is the second reading. I think we're getting information together. Uh, and Mr. Huber is working on an agreement between the CIC and the city of Medina after obtaining an appraisal of the property so that the CIC would have to pay back the city of Medina the value of the land being transferred over to the CIC for the development of the Liberty 
uh, West Liberty Street. So that's what this second reading is about, and I believe we're in the process of it. Mr. Huber, do you know the estimated time of the appraisal being completed? I don't know. Okay, so we'll just continue to read this until we have that appraisal. <laughs> so I appreciate that. <laughs> Introduction to visitors. Uh, members, of the public, members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during the portion of the council agenda devoted to the introduction of visitors. All comments shall be directed to the chair and a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. If there's a group, please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the rear microphone and state their name and address so it can be entered into the minutes. Members of the public will be afforded the opportunity to comment on other portions of the meetings that are determined <coughs> by the chair or by a vote of the majority of council members present. Is there anybody that wishes to address council at this time? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, yes, I'm back. Um, my name is Jean Pritchard on High Point. I'm president of our association, Nantucket Colony, retired health and phys ed teacher, and a former coach. To President Coyne and the members of council, at the last meeting, I made a request for council action concerning use of our parks and outdoor pool. It has been two weeks and I have not received an official response, so I'm asking you again tonight to consider my request. Medina may have outstanding recreational resources and 775 acres of dedicated parkland, but that doesn't mean we have the best programming in place to benefit the needs of all our children, particularly low-income and minority families. Medina's outdoor resources were tremendously underused before COVID, and we are lacking a long-term plan for buy-in and growth. The questions I am asked are the ones I'm going to ask you tonight. Why can other cities open their splash pads successfully during COVID and Medina can't? What makes Medina or our splash pads so unique to prevent at least the development of a plan and a trial? Why can other cities offer a robust schedule of park and recreation activities and Medina can't? What makes Medina so unique to prevent activities that meet the needs of a wide number of our Medina residents? Why can other cities offer pool access and a full range of swimming activities and lessons and Medina can't even with the new outdoor pool we rebuilt and opened in 2018? And how can city council consider a community center as other facilities remain unused? This will just be one more facility without real city support, relying on outside grants and nonprofit funding without a strategic plan while programming and a budget in place. These are critical questions that need further study and community input. We need to re-examine our current policies and ask for community to be involved. I am working with my association, public officials, and other community members who have concerns and ideas and want to work with the city. How can I get a request for council action and move forward? Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pritchard. Um, I think Mr. Shields, who's the chair of the Public Properties uh, Committee, and Mr. Worley, who is the Park and Recreation Director, um, I think they've addressed some of those or are looking into them. Mr. Shields, do you have any comments on that? We did last Tuesday. We had a two-hour meeting with Mrs. Pritchard and where we discussed the topics. We have given her the answers from the administrative side of things, but tried to meet and see if we could help in some of these situations with the splash pad issue, the swimming lessons, uh, teaching swimming in schools. We had the schools join us. Actually felt like we had a pretty productive meeting and then we received an email from Mrs. Ms. Pritchard that said wasn't interested in moving forward with our ideas. So and, we did address it. Well, and part of the issue is simply this. There was no guarantee that um, Ms. Ms. Powell and her program would be given lessons at the pool because of the lack of aquatic instructors. And there would be a charge which Mr. Shields agreed to try to help um, get funding for, but we are going to take, Ms. Mrs. Ms. Powell decided that she wanted to go back to Wadsworth because they offered water safety um, as well as the swimming and it was totally free with everything provided. So yes, I do agree we had a meeting, but I think we came out with more questions than answers. So, and my, I guess my other point would be 
why can't the entire property committee meet together with um, people that are interested in these concerns instead of just a few people? Well, I think the, the issues are normally addressed through council, through the committee that is supposed to look at them. For example, in your uh, issues, it's public properties committee that will meet and discuss those issues and then bring it to the full finance committee to look at. Now, I, I guess the, the, you're asking, it, can the public properties committee meet again and, and discuss these issues as there's three members on council that are on the public properties committee, I guess that's up to the chairman, Mr. Shields, to determine that and set up the meeting for the, the public properties committee to discuss these again, of which Mr. Worley, of course, would, would join in that discussion. And I'm not sure, he said he meant for two hours, I'm not sure what other discussion would be had or what other solutions would be generated, but I mean, it's up to Mr. Shields if you wanna talk about it again or not. And in the future, uh, it's up to your committee, I guess. Well, and I, I feel like we've continually given the answers, and the answers aren't acceptable. And even when we did come up with some plans and some good ideas that Mr. Worley and his staff worked very hard on, again, they were rejected, so. Well, I just wanted to be known, I didn't reject them. Ms. Powell did, and with, I think, some good reason. But that still doesn't solve the issue of the splash pads, which I still, I have other plans. And I guess your committee has not met um, very much. In fact, you gave a report, no report, and no meeting scheduled. I don't know why it would be so hard not to schedule a meeting at some point. Because you have the answers that we have told you, and those answers aren't going to change. We're not hiring additional people to staff the, the splash pads this year. Well, I don't understand when you go to the Cleveland Clinic for money and you um, also, um, you got $2,500 for that. There's no point in giving pool passes to kids who can't swim and they don't use them. And I think we found that out at that meeting. You, you have $32,000 in your programming budget for the rec center. There's no reason that you cannot do that. There is no fiscal reason why you cannot. You guys throw money around like it's nothing for everything except you forget about the youngest members of this community, the kids. I disagree with you. We well, care very much about kids and we care about kids for my entire time on council. So I, I just take exception to that comment. Well, it doesn't seem like you do because we have kids at that end that don't have very much to do and you have kids at this end who don't have very much to do and they don't have a lot of money. So what are they gonna do? That's my question. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Pritchard. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Mr. Chase? As I said in the past, progress only comes from compromise and new ideas. We have been down a long and twisted road leading us to this point. Our city has spent countless hours, days, and years planning a well-needed upgrade to the municipal court. And I'd like to say thank you to the people that have opposed it every step of the way. I'm not being malicious or sarcastic. From the bottom of my heart, I feel the opposition to the courthouse has forced city officials to think outside of the box and create a plan that vastly supersedes any of the previous. So after years of butting heads, I'm here to humbly say thank you, Pat Walker and Ralph Jock, and thank you for the Save the Courthouse Committee. Thank you for challenging our ideas and leading us down this road to the best plan we have had yet. We've put forth so much effort into streamlining our budgets and design to come to this latest proposal. Our new goal is to provide the municipal court the space it requires now and into the future by moving into the 1969 courthouse. This is not a rushed plan. We will have time to design a humble but useful courthouse while the city is building its courthouse behind, or the county is building its courthouse behind the 1841 courthouse. After construction is complete, we can then start our build out. And in that time, we will have public discussion about final design and the purpose of each space. Will there be questions along the way? I assure you there will. And when we have questions about this process, come here to City Council. Let this forum be your podium. You do not have to come here personally, you are, but you are more than welcome. You can send in a video, 
type a question to be read, use Facebook Live, or email a council member. Let your elected officials be your fact checkers. Challenge them. They should know every angle of every local topic. And if they don't have the answer at that moment, I assure you they will in a reasonable amount of time. I sh assure you this is true because I have harassed <clears throat> almost every single one of these guys up here. The current court is 13,000 or 13,200 square feet. Well, the 1969 courthouse is around 29,000. To my knowledge, each of the four courts require 40% more space than they currently possess. And our records are off site. Allotting that space grants us enough for the expansion of one or more courts into the future. As with any plan, the first and, and most important question is, how are we gonna pay for this? Well, we already have the money, we're not gonna take a loan, and we're not gonna raise taxes. It has been set aside throughout the years for an opportunity like this. Judge Dale Chase set up a percentage of court costs to be saved for court expenditures into the future. I believe he put this into effect in the mid to late 90s, and it was a wise choice as he could see the city was growing exponentially. He also knew that the courts would need to be expanded at some point, and now that plan has come into fruition. We are in need of a larger court, and the new design fits our budget. Our goal is to keep the courthouse a courthouse. Not only is this a sound financial choice, but it also preserves the building that so many have fought for in the last year. It's nice to see last year's battleground has turned into such a great compromise. And a yes vote on issue one will give our municipal court the space that it needs at a fraction of any of the previous costs. This choice will grant Medina City a humble but adequate choice that is within our budget. If Medina Municipal Court does not move into the old 1969 courthouse, the future of that building could be uncertain. I, the reason I state this is that with any change of elected officials, the commitment to our courthouse's preservation may be in jeopardy. You know as well as I that a promise is only as good as the person that makes it. And if the person were to leave office, where would we be? The answer is we'd be at a point where we regret not voting yes on issue one. In closing, I'd like to hi highlight that this idea is a choice of the people, and this is democracy at its best. The will of the people have spoken, and the people want a voice on this topic. If you want an affordable, well-planned, low-budget, humble courthouse that pays for itself now and into the future, vote yes on issue one. And in doing so, you will be preserving the legacy of our 1969 courthouse forever ensuring that the skyline of Main Street Medina remains intact. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? I have one request for public comment, uh, and I read it, and it is as follows. Medina firefighters save lives, government waste puts lives at risk. Medina firefighters have to protect the lives of citizens who live in hundreds of homes and apartments in a 15 square mile area. However, most of Medina re residents are unaware that in early morning hours, when the deadly fire is most likely to occur, no firefighters are at the firehouse to respond to a call. In a potentially deadly house fire, seconds count, and the delay that results because no firefighters are at the firehouse may cost people their lives. The $5 million that Mayor Hamill and other politicians want to spend to immediately see move the Medina Municipal Court would cover the cost to have firefighters on duty at the firehouse at all night for 10 years. Even though some of the money for the Medina Municipal Court is in the Medina Municipal Court Special Projects Fund, that money could be used for the Medina Municipal Court expenses, which would free up money for the city to use for its firefighters. The Stop Government Waste Committee, and I personally find it reprehensible that the Medina politicians put their interest of politically connected private developers ahead of the safety interests of the citizens. I encourage all voters <laughs> in Medina to vote no <laughs> on issue one to stop government waste. I encourage Medina Mayor Hamill and other politicians to stop the lucrative giveaways to political insiders and to give the people of Medina around the clock full-time firefighter protection. Thank you for your consideration. Respectfully, Pat Walker, member of Stop Government Waste Committee, 231 South Broadway, Medina, Ohio. 
Is there any other um, things on Facebook or anything, Ms. Patton? Uh, yeah, I can read it if you'd like. Okay. Um, That's besides time. I'm sorry, what? Yes, go ahead. Oh, um, Dolly Yowler says, please ask City Council why the signs say save the courthouse when they have been saying at all the meeting it was saved and will not be torn down. I think that was already answered by uh, Mr. Chase, but her case rather. <laughs> yes. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. Introduction and consideration of ordinances resolutions. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings on the following ordinances resolutions. Resolution 6321, Ordinance 6421, Ordinance 6521, Ordinance 6621, Ordinance 6721, Resolution 6821, Ordinance 6921, and Ordinance 7021. I will make a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings of tonight's ordinances and resolutions. Second. Any discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules? Coyne. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Resolution 6321, a resolution authorizing an application for grant assistance from the Madonna County Drug Abuse Commission, McDack, for the police department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause requested I move to add at this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and resolution. Uh, is this Chief Kenny? That's me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a request for permission to apply for the McDack grant and accept it if granted. Uh, this supports our school resource officer program. The emergency clause is requested because the deadline for the grant is May 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the emergency clause and or the resolution? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Resolution 6321 passes 70. Ordinance 6421, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of one 2022 F600 cabin chassis and one 2021 F150 four wheel drive truck from Montrose Ford for the Water Department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? <laughs> Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we talked about this, uh, these purchases last year's budget process. Uh, the first purchase is a dump truck. The F600 that will replace a 2006 truck that we once replaced the bed on. In this new purchase, we're asking for a stainless steel bed to help preserve the uh, longevity of the truck. The uh, second uh, truck request is re um, a pickup truck, an F150, that is replacing a 2008 pickup truck with 113,000 miles. So both these vehicles serve the city well. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Ordinance 6421 passes 70. Ordinance 6521, ordinance authorizing the hiring of one OHM advisors for assistance and preparation of the updates in Banana County comprehensive plan. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Mendel. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as I said, uh, this previously, this is uh, we this process had gone through an RFP uh, review. Uh, there was a team a review of a team by city administration uh, and recommended to city council uh, for the mayor to accept and contract with OHM advisors to manage the creation of a new comprehensive plan for the city of Medina. Uh, there's sufficient funds to cover this and I recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Ordinance 6521 passes 7 0. Ordinance 6621, North authorizing the mayor to enter into a memorandum of lease with PeaceWorks Inc. for the property at 406 South Broadway Street. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mayor Hamill. Thank you, Mr. President. So for the uh, public's benefit, uh, 406 South Broadway is the trailhead at the uh, house just south of the railroad tracks on the east side of the road of South Broadway Street. Uh, PeaceWorks and the uh, city of Medina entered into a uh, lease agreement uh, that was five years and then extended another five years. The first uh, time period was May of 2014 until May of 2019, and then it renewed for a second five years 
which will take us from 2019 to 2024. I was approached by the president of PeaceWorks Incorporated, Dave Clarity, who is here tonight, uh, if council has any questions, but his request was to extend it for another five years with an option for a second five years so, so that as they do upkeep and maintenance and improvements, they know that, that um, they're going to have it for longer than the remaining uh, few years in this lease. Um, we talked about it at finance um, and uh, the council as a whole uh, are very pleased with the operations uh, of the trailhead with uh, PeaceWorks as is the administration. And I'd respectfully ask for uh, council's uh, approval to enter into this lease. No, thank you, Mayor, and we appreciate all the work that's done at the Trailhead and, and PeaceWorks Inc.'s involvement uh, in, in that, uh, that space and, and the services they provide. We really appreciate that. I don't think anybody on council objects to the uh, extension of this lease and modification to the lease as presented. Any other questions? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heppinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Ordinance 6621 passes 7 0. Ordinance 6721, North South Hurst and Mayor to accept two easements necessary for the Spring Grove Street Bridge Replacement Project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Pat. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is, uh, as mentioned, for the city's project to replace the bridge at Spring Grove Street. In order to accomplish that, we do need to accept three easements. Uh, and these are two of those. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Heffinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Ordinance 6721 passes 7 0. Resolution 6821, a resolution donating 25 Dell Optiplex computers to the Manana City Schools. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion, Mayor Hamill? Is this you? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So uh, these are replacement computers. Uh, the city has a rotation schedule for all of the computers that we use here, and it's uh, we replace them when they're four to five years old. And um, the school uh, has labs that these can be used in for for another period of years, and and get some good use out of it instead of us taking them to the city auction, which we'd be required to do if we don't give them to another government entity. Um, and then getting pennies on the dollar. So I'd respectfully ask for uh, council's permission for this. And it did come up in the finance meeting, but in case somebody's watching that did not see that, of whether or not these were offered to either Buckeye schools or uh, the career center. And um, I can't say for sure uh, with, with this group, I, I know we have in the past, but I'll, I'll ensure that we check with all three entities in the future, even if we have to split some of these up. Appreciate that, thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. Since I work for the school district, I will need to abstain on this. Thank you, any other discussion? Would a ple clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the resolution? Coyne. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Heppinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Abstain. Simpson. Yes. Resolution 6821 passes 60 as one abstention. Ordinance 6921 orders for establishing the American Rescue Plan Act Fund number 171 for the city of Medina. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as council's aware, ordinarily with federal grants and, and state grants as well, we uh, have to apply and then if it's awarded to us, we have to accept it. This is a little bit different because this is a, a kind of blanket thing that they're doing for everybody. The other thing that's different about this is ordinarily when we create a new fund, we have to uh, ask the state auditor's office for permission to create that fund, but the state auditor's office basically because they don't want every city in Ohio asking for that um, permission. They gave us a blanket authorization to do this um, a, a little bit ago, and that's when we turned in this request. We're required to account for federal funds um, in, their, in, an, in its own fund. That's why we're creating this fund. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hazeltine? Yes. Heppinger? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. And Coyne? Yes. Ordinance 6921 passes 7-0. And finally, Ordinance 70-21 orders to rezoning a portion of 123 West Liberty Street from PF Public Facilities to C2 Commercial Business. 
and 364 Foundry Street and 367 North Huntington Street from R3 High Density Urban Residential to OC Open Space Conservation. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Mendel. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on February 11th, uh, the Planning Commission reviewed this request by the City of Medina. All three of these properties are city are currently city-owned properties. Uh, the one on Liberty Street would be part of the uh, two parcels that would be under the uh, Liberty View project being managed by the Medina City Development Corporation. And the other two on Foundry and Huntington are both city-owned properties that are adjacent to Ray Miller Park that we acquired it within the last two years that are just going to be intended to be incorporated into uh, Ray Miller Park. So they need to have the same zoning as the park. Uh, this has gone through Planning Commission on February 11th, as I said, and they recommend approval. And it's gone through Finance Committee, uh, the 30-day notice period for City Council, public hearing before City Council, and now the uh, ordinance this evening. I recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment on the adoption of the ordinance for the rezoning? Will the clerk please call the rule on the adoption of the ordinance? Heffinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Ordinance 70 21 passes 7 0. Council comments. Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. The only thing I ask is people to uh, please vote for the, the for issue one. Uh, that is, early voting is going on now, and the, the last day for voting will be May 4th. I, I respectfully ask that you take everything into consideration and, and pass this issue. Thank you. Any other council comments? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I would just like to follow up quickly on the splash pad since it came up again tonight. I uh, want to let everybody know that those two splash pads were set up in our parks, open, they're free for all. They do not have fences around them. We do not have any staffing ever at those splash pads. It was designed as a recreational opportunity where we didn't have to pay for staffing or have somebody there to attend them during the day. Uh, we are still planning to open those splash pads if the regulations from the Ohio Department of Health allow it. Right now under the Responsible Restart Ohio guidelines, we are not able to do that without having somebody there to monitor the number of people there, sanitize, all things that we do not have in the budget to do right now, but I guess I want to assure everybody that if we can do it or if things continue to improve, improve like the mayor was mentioning today after his call with the health commissioner, we are going to be ready to open those splash pads. In addition, at the meeting we had last week, we talked about, let's say that Responsible Restart does not allow us to open it and things do not improve with the pandemic. We're trying to come up with some special events where we could offer maybe a cookout and open the splash pads where periodically through the summer for some opportunities for the kids to be there and we would have enough staffing to, to meet those responsible restart guidelines. So there is a lot going on behind the scenes and the, the parks department is making every effort to be ready to open those splash pads the minute we're allowed to. But right now it is just not allowable under the current regulations that we choose to follow. Um, can't talk to other cities, but we do follow the responsible restart guidelines and we will do everything we can. There's nobody that wants those splash pads open more than the administration council and the parks department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shields. Mrs. Hazeltine. Thank you. I didn't even have to ask. You already knew. I you saw, could yes. see it in my eyes. Yes, I did. Um, again, I would just like to repeat, please vote yes on issue one. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons to, and you've heard a lot of them this evening. Secondly, um, I was kind of dismayed to hear that it was somebody thought that we didn't have a lot of programs to offer through our Parks Department, our Rec Center. Uh, ever since I became aware of the Rec Center's <laughs> Facebook page, I've been sharing all of their activities to my regular council page. Um, I think it's Jess Hazeltine, Ward 1 Council or something like that. But there's so many activities posted on their Facebook page that I literally can't clog up my own page with just that stuff because there's so many free activities going on there. This past weekend on Saturday uh, was an Earth Day celebration and it was at the rec center. I had to work in the morning, but I was able to stop by around noon, 1230. And there were people there. There was uh, people from the Arboretum rep you know, representing that. 
there was free seedlings. So the people that were there, you know, were very helpful. They helped me pick out my perfect seedling, which ended up being a river birch. I chose it because it's supposed to grow faster than other trees. I'm very impatient. But there's so many programs, and I would encourage anyone to just look, even just on the Facebook page, and you can see so many free activities that we offer. And we really are very lucky to have all of these activities available at no cost. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Havinger? Um, earlier comment was made that um, I don't know if it was directed directly at all of us or an individual that we didn't care about the youth of Medina. And I, I think that's the farthest thing from the truth here, especially if we're directing it at Mr. Shields, who has made a career here on council and working for Medina City Schools, working for the best of this community and their youth. And I want to thank him personally because he definitely does care about the youth here. Also, uh, sure. vote yes on issue one. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first of all, I want to echo uh, Con Councilman Heffinger's comments about Mr. Shields. Uh, Mr. Shields and I started our uh, association, if you will, back in the 90s, coaching baseball. Mr. Shields doesn't have children of his own. He was out coaching teenagers for baseball. He, if there's anybody in this town who cares about kids, it's Jim Shields. Don't let anybody kid you. No pun intended. Uh, he, he has the kids in his heart 100% of the time. So um, I take exception to that. I take exception to other things that are being portrayed here. Um, the city's wasting money. That We can take money that is earmarked for courthouse building only. It can't be used for anything else. And somebody's trying to deceive us and telling us that it can be used. No, it can't. It cannot be used. We cannot shuffle funds around in any way, shape, or form. So with that, please vote yes on issue one. Show so we can go along and continue. When you look at, when you look at what Mr. Piccoli here used a truck from 2006 to 2021, 2008 to 2021, he put a new bed on one of the trucks just to make it last longer. If that's government waste, I mean, these people are, they, they, they don't have a clue. They're clueless. So, um, and I do want to address one thing where last week, yeah, my passion showed. I do have a passion for this city. I do have a passion for saving money. Ask my wife and my kids. They know how cheap I am. <laughs> uh, and um, I was accused of being unprofessional. Let me say this, I would rather be, behave unprofessionally while telling the truth than behave professionally while lying to the public. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Nathan, I uh, appreciate your comments. Um, it was, uh, I don't know, it was compassionate and it was a, a really nice way to kind of tie things together I think the way you spoke to, you know, we all want to work together. And if we don't work together, we will never reach our goals. And we need to find that middle ground. Um, it, very effective, and I appreciate you coming to council and taking time um, to do that. Dave, thank you for all your work with, um, with PeaceWorks. Um, for, for it spokes in particular, um, your um, collaboration with a whole bunch of other groups to get that all going not only provides a great service right at the entrance to this inner city park but but it saved one of the oldest houses in town and I'm thrilled that you're you're asking for a longer lease um, it's great service to the community and speaking of great service to the community and I think at the last council meeting I think I was somewhere along the line I was called a curmudgeon which isn't too bad really because I'm not, not young anymore. Um, but being called a Medina politician in terms that I think are used in a, uh, meant to be a negative is not the way I look at myself or anybody else up here. You know, I really just look at us as folks that live in town and um, public servants. And Jim, thank you for all the time you've spent as a public servant. Um, I've known you since you were 12 years old. And I uh, have great respect for you and, um, and do not, um, uh, agree in any way with the characterization of um, liking or disliking children that was um, presented presented here tonight. 
this is a unique, we have a unique operation at the city of Medina, particularly because we all work together. Um, not, not, the administration's not over here and the council's not over here. Uh, and we are not divided on council by, by particular politics. We are together on city council with the administration by um, always keeping the best interest of this community um, first and foremost, trusting each other, um, cooperating in order to get, get uh, the work done for this community. And it's expressed by folks that come here to speak. It's expressed by the outcome of the administration, the services that you get, and by the five-year budget plan that, that, that the President of Council, I believe, instituted quite a while ago that has kept this city um, financially, um, financially sound year after year after year after year. Um, and if there's government waste, I sure haven't seen it. And I don't think that in reality anybody else has seen it either. So um, I appreciate the work the administration does, the fact that we can, we can meet, we can talk, we work together, and city council as well, and we are always looking for a good outcome. Um, but I consider us all to be public servants, um, not just politicians, but maybe curmudgeons. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and I'd like to follow up with Mr. Lamb as indicated regarding the city's finances and the issues that people are hearing with issue one about government waste. Uh, I've been on council for, I guess, the longest. 23 uh, years. For 23 years. And uh, I guess the, what I want to say is that, you know, we take the city finances seriously, both existing previous members of council and the administration and previous administrations. Uh, we look at the numbers hard. And uh, I think we're, we're proud to say that we've worked, you know, even with the finance director to achieve a Moody's rating AA1. I think from our city our size, that's the second best in the state. Uh, 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 with Westlake, I think, leading the way of a city our size. So I think as far as people saying, well, you're wasting money, look at, look at the facts with respect to what we do and what the Moody's rating system rates us because that is really telling us how we act as a city. We're not tooting our own horn. We have third parties telling us how we're doing. And I think that's the best indicator for residents of the city of Medina to really evaluate whether or not we're wasting money. And I think we're, you'll find that we're probably one of the most conservative cities in the state of Ohio. And I think if you ask the department heads, they'll agree. Um, we, <laughs> we try to stretch the money as far as we can. Uh, some may not like that. Some may disagree with, with, with that, and that's fine. Uh, we all have disagreements throughout our careers uh, as public servants and as uh, administrators and department heads. And we get along with each other, but we may disagree, and that's fine. So I think the public has to understand that we are dedicated to serving the public the best we can and to be fiscally responsible the best we can. And if we didn't think this was a good idea, we wouldn't promote it, of course. Uh, we think this is a great idea for the city of Medina. We think this is a great idea for the future of the city of Medina. And we really want to make sure that the 1969 building on the square is preserved forever. Um, if, it's, if it's left vacant, we have no idea what future uh, commissioners or future councils would do or not do. Uh, but we know what we want. We know what the citizens of the city of Medina want. They want the, the look of the square to maintain uh, the current uh, atmosphere and the current aesthetics. And we are looking forward to maintain that. We hope that you vote yes on issue one to preserve you know, the square of Medina for generations to come. With that said, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.